Hello, hello everyone! Alright, so in this video, we are going to be talking about how to maintain a Duke 390 for a beginner. So a little bit of a story. <laughs> um, actually for me, I started out riding a KTM Duke 202. So I am, I can consider myself very familiar with KTM. And it's also, I'm, I'm glad that I can, uh, you know, give you a bit of input as a beginner because everyone is, was a beginner before, right? So yeah, back then I was a beginner. I got my Duke 200, looks good on the outside, inside was trash. <laughs> oh my god, that one really sp make me spend like a lot of money to, you know, get things right, fix a lot of things, wear and tear stuff. And ah, a lot of things, it was a headache. Uh. <laughs> but you know what, but it taught me a lot of, a lot of like good lessons, you know. Oh yeah, by the way, actually I'm also um, going to do my engine oil change today. So, right, might as well I just make this video. So, let's start with the very first thing, which is... Alright, so first off is, let your engine warm up first before you go for a ride if it's still cold. Alright, the reason is actually why we don't want to like you know go and ride straight away when we start it up and it's cold is because like there's oil engine oil down there that is still very thick and still you know not really able to lubricate everything yet so we warm up the engine let the oil be a little bit thinner so it can um, lubricate everything first and then we go for a ride that is one way of prolonging your engine life so yes, let it idle for about a few minutes at least. Don't worry, the temperature the temperature um, it goes up quite fast on a Duke 390. So it's been just like less than a minute, and it's already at one bar. So for me, I prefer to you know warm it up until at least two bars, and only I go for a ride. And then we have the TFT screen, which is not the best quality in the world like if you've been following me um, I've, I've actually said it before like you know it has a bit of uh, water condensation in the screen when it's cold right so yeah so how do I maintain this um, TFT having experience with a uh, Duke 200 you know Duke 200 we I don't usually park you know under the hot sun like during heavy rain if it's avoidable I'll avoid this kind of uh, parking so what do I do if I cannot avoid it, if I'm parking like, outside, you know? Um, I, would, uh, I would grab a plastic bag just to cover the meter, just to like, you know, to hope like it doesn't, water doesn't get in. A little bit of water is fine, but like heavy rain or downpour, I just, I just couldn't, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. I have to cover, I cover the meter up. So yeah, that's me, <laughs> a little bit overprotective. And for this Duke 390, even though it's a new bike, it's a new model, but the problem is actually still there. So the TFT is not really good, and I don't really trust them a lot. So I'll still cover it up with a poncho that I made myself. Especially under like, you know, hot sun, under the sun, like really hot. It kind of distorts the, the color, not, not the color, not distorts, you know, how, how would I put it in the words? Uh, it kind of, yes. So when the TFT gets really hot, it kind of flickers at the left top corner for me, in my case. Yeah, so yeah, I don't like parking under the hot sun too. And if I have no choice, I will cover it up. So number three, is it number three or number four? Number three, number three. Uh, not really sure if it's considered maintained or not. I think it's considered maintained. Okay, it's the fork itself. So you see the fork, uh, for me, uh, I'm living in Malaysia and we have basically two seasons it is either hot as hell or it's always raining so basically it, <laughs> there's only two seasons in malaysia so during rainy seasons we get like rain almost every day actually it is every day and the duke 390 we have upside down fog so when it's raining you know sand dirt and all this you know road stuff debris when it goes in like to the fog seal it could break the seal. The fog oil uh, would actually leak. Yeah, you know, to prevent leaking. So for me, I will just uh, put, you know, like the fog protector. 
yeah, you know, to prevent leaking, that's what I got. I've been having it like since 2018, I believe. I mean, previously, when I owned the Duke 200, uh, I did put the protection over there also. And 390, this new 390 also, um, I got that Fox seal cover. Lah. So, so far, nothing has happened, no leaking, never had a leak before. I think it helps, yeah. Okay, number four is very, very important. Actually, you know what? I'm on the way to OBS, Orange Bike Shop, for my engine oil change. And let's continue there. Okay, we are here ready for engine oil change. Oh, look at that. Super Duke. Crazy. Oh my god. This, this, this boy, look at this boy, poor baby, poor baby, so it actually survived the crash, <laughs> look at how much it fucks up the crash cage, so yes, it's very important to have a crash cage, crash cage too, look at this guys, so right now, I am actually doing my engine oil change, and the odometer is actually 3,300 kilometers, but yeah, I'm gonna just do it because engine oil actually oxidizes over time. So yeah, even if um, you are not riding it a lot, you should change it when the time comes. Lah. So let's just say that if you have a very bad record of like, you know, maintenance on engine oil, what it will affect is, for example, the coil. I've seen it before. Uh, that you know coils burn out it's actually most of the time it's because of the engine oil it's not efficient enough to cool down the coil so it burns out and yeah that is where you have to replace a coil and also like for example the the what do you call that the block head i think where the you know the rocker arms and all sits and if the oil is not good already and you're still running it very hard yeah it's gonna damage the top of your engine block so it is vital, it's very important to change the engine oil in time. I would, I usually never go like above 4,000 kilometers, semi-synthetic or fully synthetic, I'll just change it at maximum 4,000 kilometers. All right, all right, all done with my engine oil change. So this is number five. I lost count. Anyways, the next thing that uh, you should be maintaining is the water pump seal. And actually, it's the whole set. Lah. I'm not too sure what it's called, the water pump or like the water pump seal. Yeah, it's basically the, the things that get your coolant moving. So, based on what my mechanic told me, is every 20,000, we must replace it. But for me, I kind of don't wait for 20,000 kilometers. Um, I would just do it by around 12,000. You know what? I'm a bit of a, like an OCD. I, I'm a bit overprotective. <laughs> an overprotective mum to the child. Yeah, so I would do it way before 20,000, like 12,000, just in case, you know, if there's any leaks happen. Because like once if it like the water pump seal is, you know, broken and the coolant would eventually leak into the engine oil, and then they mix together and then they become like muddy colour which is actually is quite harmful but yeah that's just how I do it I'm like extra cautious <laughs> about it because like people say KTM has like a bad reputation for reliability right but for me uh, based on my experience not really maybe I've been taking good care of my bike even since the Duke 200 I didn't really have any issue Except for uh, the very first time that I, I, I mean like when I bought the bike And yes, of course it has a lot of problem But that's not on me That's on the previous owner So, yes After that, I did all my maintenance um, Scheduled maintenance, everything is on time Not on time, it's actually earlier even <laughs> And nothing ever happened to me before No reliability problems have happened So, yeah if you're saying that KTM bikes is has a reliability issue, I I would argue that 
it just depends on how you're gonna take care of it okay let's move on to point number six you know what screw the numbers i already messed it up i guess is chain and sprocket all right these are the wear and tear stuff like basically so so for me to maintain your chain and sprocket it is very very easy so the way how i do it is i wash i would wash and clean the chain every time i wash my bike so basically it's about one or two months but the most important thing is to loop it so yes there are arguments about modern change doesn't need loops and whatsoever right i loop my chain about every 200 kilometers i ride or every time after i i fuel up so one full tank is about 270 kilometers for me so yeah chain looping number seven screw the numbers <laughs> so yeah valve clearance very important but i'm not an expert to be talking about this so here's what i do so as again based on my mechanic every 15 km 15000 kilometers but for me I, oh my god you're such a f for me i just don't even go up to 12000 kilometers and i will just change replace four of the shims and yes you know just to prevent any problems right and then you have to go back to the service center again and this and that yada yada so yeah i just skip the hassle and just do it earlier and also uh, for me if i replace the shim uh, while doing valve clearance i wouldn't just replace two because uh, ktm 3, 390 duke there's four shims so let's say if two is still in good condition i would not only replace two i would just replace all of them because eventually it is gonna wear out and thin out and then you have to replace another two piece again and that's another you know labor fees and cost and all and whatnot right so when time comes i'll just replace all four together doesn't matter if it's still in, in, on spec or not so yeah that's me that's how i maintain uh, my bike because you know actually i love my bike so much it's almost like my child it is actually like my training practice child <laughs> yes so yeah that's pretty much about it i hope this video helped you out i hope it can give a bit of input or like a guideline on how to take care of uh, how to take care or maintain your 390 Duke, especially for beginners right because this bike is uh, targeted for beginners so yes thank you for leaving a comment and suggesting me um on doing this video because yes it is going to be helpful for beginners because i was once a beginner and i have no idea about uh, any of the maintenance stuff until i started doing it so yeah if you have any questions or anything that you would like to know uh, about this ktm 390 duke just drop it in the comments below i am very happy to share it to you as again like if you like my videos if you love it of course you have to hit the subscribe button thank you all so much and i'll see you all in the next video goodbye wait 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 also i want to invite you to follow me on instagram at kickstandup channel yes that is where you can DM me and ask me about anything or opinions or like what's my experience this and that right before you want to buy a new KDM bike okay that's it bye